As we continue our journey of becoming new in Christ, we move from belong and believe to our third conversation. Let's talk about become. At this time in our church, we celebrate two great feasts about becoming. Christ first and us following on the great journey of moving into the fullness of who we are destined to be. Jesus ascended, returning to the fullness of his identity in divine glory, but now with a human face as our very own brother and saviour. St Paul tells us that because Jesus laid down his life for us, God bestowed on him a name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And for good reason, Jesus told his followers to wait in prayer so that they too become something more. Then at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit shook and inspired this motley group of frightened, dispirited disciples to become great witnesses to Christ. The Spirit filled them with undaunted energy. The church was born, just as it was for the first disciples. So it can be for us. We can become new in Christ. Personally, as a parish, as a diocese, we can become more than anyone except God could imagine. Becoming is the best part of the Christian story because of what Jesus has made possible for us to become. The best is still ahead of us. Become means to begin to be, to grow to be, to, to develop into something more. It begins a new process that is ongoing. According to Jesus, it extends into eternity. In life, whether we like it or not, whether we choose to or not, we're always becoming something on the way to somewhere. That place can be either better or worse than where we are now. We're not static. We're becoming today what we will be forever. Our DOS and Renewal journey is called Becoming New in Christ. Our becoming as Catholics and Catholic parishes can only be authentic if it is towards Christ. In this sense, we become new by becoming closer to Christ, who is forever new. Becoming is a very popular theme today, especially in a me-focused world. We're told, reach your full potential, become what you want to be, self-actualize, make your own destiny. While there is truth and much good in making the most of our individual potential, it gets distorted and destructive when we place ourselves at the center of life and make everything else, including God, revolve around our wants, our desires, our dreams and our needs. A big problem with this self-centered approach is that it ignores some basic realities. For example, not all we desire is good for us or what we need at a particular time. We know that already. But more importantly, according to Jesus, we belong to God. We do not own ourselves, even though we have free will and can choose the direction of our lives. We've been given responsibility for our lives and we will have to give an account to God for what we have done with this gift. We are stewards, caretakers of our very selves. Your life is God's gift to you to see what you will do with it, to see what you become. There is a beautiful insight about become that goes like this. To become is to let go so that we can let something new become. Consider the stories of those who were the first to closely share Jesus' earthly life. See how they let go. Think about Mary, a young village girl, probably between 12 and 14 years of age, from a backward nowhere place. But hidden inside, she had a deep and genuine relationship with God. She was full of grace, fully open to God's gifts. Yet when the angel spoke to her, she was greatly troubled. She tested what she heard against what she assumed her life should be. Then she decided to let go of her assumptions and let God. She said, let it be done to me according to your word. 
See what she has become and what has become in the world because she let God come into her life in a new way. Salvation was given to the whole world. Think about Joseph finding that the girl to whom he was betrothed was already pregnant would have been a great shock and a scandal to him. An explanation something like, God has done this, an angel told me would have been impossible to believe, and he didn't, according to Matthew's Gospel. But after his own encounter with God, he let go of his assumptions about Mary and let go of what he intended to do and, taking a great risk, accepted her as his wife and let come into the world God's extraordinary plan. No wonder Pope Francis declared 2021 the year of St. Joseph. The lives of all the early disciples such as Peter, Paul, Martha and Mary, Thomas are stories of letting go in order to let God come into the world in a new way. Most of all, they had to let go of deeply held convictions about their understanding of God and about what the Messiah would be like. Many at the time would not do that and they left Jesus or opposed him. But those who allowed themselves to become something more, something beyond their religious and cultural expectations became channels of the Holy Spirit so that others could also become something more by the power of the same Spirit. That's how the church has grown and renewed many, many times over the centuries until here we are today, you and I, with this question before us, are we becoming something more by the power of the Holy Spirit? Something that is renewing in Christ? Are we willing to let go of something that, that's blocking Christ's goodness from coming into us and through us to the world around us? The church has allowed me to become whom I want to be, a forgiving person, somebody with empathy, and somebody who can understand other people, which I couldn't do earlier on. But now, as uh, by God's grace, I have been able to become a better person. And this is what I have been looking for. It's not just being a passive uh, person who belongs to a religion, but being an active person, being able to engage with the Catholic community, to be able to do things. He will design our life in a way that is better for us. And it, at the end of it all, we realize that if we were to do it all, all by ourselves, we can't do anything. I can say now that my life is better than if I were to work on my salvation or my priesthood all by myself. And whenever there is difficulty, I ask God, sometimes even in fasting, pray to God, Lord, what do you have for me? What is the way forward? and has been guiding me so far. So I can say that to become somebody, to become a Christian, to become a child of God, the best thing is we look to God, who designed us, who created us, and give our life to Him. Especially when it becomes difficult that we can't go forward, we have to think that there is somebody who created us. So He created us, called us into the Christianity, and called us to become children of Him, sent His Son to come and die for us. He can design our life. So we have to rely on God every time. Look back over the last year and ask yourself, how have I changed for the better? In particular, how have I taken on Christ likeness? How have we as a parish taken on Christ likeness? That is the aim of the Christian life, to become more like Christ. We know it's not something we can accomplish by our own power, but we must give God something real to work with, our lives. Do we give God the best of us or do we give God our leftovers? Do we think we can become new in Christ, become all that God imagines we can be by giving God our leftovers to work with? Leftover thoughts, leftover prayers, leftover time, leftover energy, leftover talent, leftover money, leftover love. Deep down, we know that that's not possible. We have to think the belief in Jesus that we profess with the way we live every day, the way to, we behave. We have to put Christ at the center of our lives first, then we go from there. That's what being a disciple means. We are God's partners sent out by Christ through the Spirit to do good as befits the good God 
who created us. Are you and I going to allow ourselves to become that reality more and more, letting go to let Christ's goodness come? If that isn't happening, if I can't see it over the past year where I have changed to become more like Christ, then something is amiss. If we can't see it over the past year where we have changed as a parish to become more like Christ, then something is amiss. We're called to quietly build and contribute to a world that is more real in the long run than the real world that wraps noisily around our lives every day. It is Jesus' real world that is becoming within the so-called real world. Jesus calls it the kingdom of heaven or reign of God. And it's happening all around us despite so many appearances to the contrary. And it will prevail in the end. That is Jesus' promise. Each time we renew our baptismal promises, each time we break bread with Him in Eucharist, we're renewing our commitment to partner with Him and the Holy Spirit to make His becoming world a reality at every opportunity, great or small, in us and beyond us. That's why we pray, your kingdom come. May it become in us. To be in Christ is to become new because that's what Christ does for us and longs to do in us, to renew us from the inside out. Christ renews our spirit, our hope, our integrity, our courage, our view of the world, our attitudes, our character, our willingness to do even at cost to ourselves. Christ can renew our parish as a whole. In Christ, we can become new if we give him a chance to let the Holy Spirit energize us. Let's have conversations about become.